Hello everyone, MT Off-Road. Today is an exciting day for me. I finally get to install this Max Jax M6K lift in my garage. Now this is a lift put out by Max Jax Ben Pack, and this is meant for indoor locations, uh, regular residential garages, eight foot ceilings. It has a four foot lift height on it. Uh, it's totally portable, uh, semi-portable I should say. It has wheels on the back of the column, so when you unbolt it from the floor, you can put it up against the wall when you're not using it or move it to a different location if you have two spots you like to use it at. But it's definitely portable, but it's definitely secure as there are, I think, eight uh, anchor bolts that actually bolt this into the concrete. So I'm excited to get this in today. Um, gonna, be, gonna be real handy for working on the vehicles and working on the side-by-sides. Uh, hopefully I got enough concrete for it or else I'm going to be delayed a little bit and digging up concrete and uh, making it deeper. Minimum requirement for this is four and a quarter worth of concrete. So 4.25 inches deep. The deeper the better. And let's go from there. Let's get going on this. Right in the box here. Well, there's all the arms. Some brackets. Frame pads. Power unit. Box here. We got some operating instructions. No installation instructions though. All the wheels, anchors, uh, lift points. So, the Lugu Loctite. Hmm, never heard of that one. Now I'm assuming these might be the. Nope, not the hydraulic fittings. Wheels. There's the hydraulic fittings. Oh, there's the lift pads. Get these out of here. There's the hoses. There's the anchors. All right, let's get these hydraulic fittings put together. First thing we got to do is got to lay these things down on their back with this open side up, and get the hydraulic hose fittings all uh, all fitted up together, and get them installed. Let's get this down. Hey, Jumpers. First step, lay the post down, slide the lift head to the top of the post and remove the hydraulic cylinder from the post. Rotate the hydraulic cylinder to access the hydraulic cylinder port. All right. Oh, let's see. Rotate cylinder to gain access to the hydraulic cylinder port. Remove the six millimeter Allen bolt right here and install the fittings. We'll be taking one of these fittings out of the bag and putting it together with one of these assemblies right here. Like so. And then of course using some Loctite to put those together. Potentially against my better judgment, Decided to use some actual thread sealer, but we'll see. Maybe this will work out great. All right, a little bit of redo. Do not put the big fitting on until these are on and you want this pointed up because these have to go through a hole that's in the bottom of the, uh, of the rack there. Now we can stand it up and put that quick connect fitting on.
See? Right there. There we go. Next steps, go ahead and install these handles on there. That way you've got an easy way to move it. These bars were in the instructions too, but they came installed on there already. So, this should be pretty straightforward. Just like I thought the hydraulic fittings were going to be. Uh, the next step in this process is assembly of the cart for the power unit. Um, I may end up putting the cart, uh, the power unit on the wall eventually, but go ahead and use the cart for now, or at least assemble it so I have it. So, let's get this thing into a little more open area and put it together. So in this package, these bolts up here in the corner, those are going to be the ones that uh, bolt the, the handles on to the brackets. So let's see if you can see this focus. This is the second item of quality control that uh, is lacking. This is supposed to be a Phillips head screw. See that big chunk in the middle of it? That's actually part of the screw. I gotta knock that out so I can tighten up these screws on there. The other thing I found was one of the bushings for the wheels that go on the rack. The bushing was too small for the bolt to go through. So that's got to be drilled out so the wheel will go on there. But I don't think I'm putting a wheel on one of those racks anyway because I don't see myself moving it. I just see myself moving the other one. And another thing, this hole isn't punched out all the way. Got to knock that plug out of there too. Bottom plate is on. Let's go for the, the upper one. Here's the wheels. Oh, these are nice. They actually have a, a roller bearing in there, not just a cheap bushing or something. Washer, washer, couple of E-clips. Looks pretty good. Now we just got this box to mount. Looks like box mounts back here oh it's gonna mount with these screws these bolts here so uh those gotta come out Next is to attach the power unit to the cart and get the hoses hooked up there. And that'll be these that'll be these bolts right here in this box. Let's get this out.
power unit is on the cart. Next step is the flow diverter. Now it says make sure when you're facing it that the out uh, the out caps are on top. That's these yellow ones are the out. That's going to go right here with the same style of bolts that we used to bolt on the power unit. Next step is pull this shipping plug out of the in port and we're going to put a fitting in there that's in the box. This one of, one of these fittings here is this long 90. Thread it in and tighten it up. Next you pull this plug out of the power unit here and then take the short hose out of the box and we'll hook those two together. With a fitting, of course. All right. Posts are set. Went ahead and moved them a little over three inches away from the wall and the edge of the concrete, as per instructions. And ran a chalk line over to the other post. I went 123 inches from the back side of that one to the front of this one. And that gives me plenty of room to pull in the garage and this is out of the way. Ran a chalk line, double checked it for square from corner to corner, from corner here to corner there, crisscrossing it. Everything is square, ready to go. Now, just gotta go get a drill and a 7 8 concrete bit. Few of the holes drilled now, had it marked out, had the post in place, drilled the holes using a roto hammer with a 7 8 bit, just as per the instructions five inches deep and turns out my concrete's even deeper than that so i should be plenty good to go now i'm just going to take these anchors get them set in there and got to pound them in so they expand out i'm going to go ahead and put these three in first and then bolt this post down so i can drill the other holes and that way the post doesn't move next step is to take the setting tool the big bolt here with the nut and the washer Insert it all the way in to the anchor. Set this distance from here to the bottom of the washer to 5 eighths of an inch. Just like that. Place in hole. And set. Tighten this nut. It says to 190 pounds or 90 pounds, but kind of hard when it's a nut. So we're just going to do it until it's really tight. Clickums, 90 pounds. Take this out. And that is set. Ooh, that one went deeper. Make sure I get the right leg bolt. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to take one end of the hose, hook it up into the out port on the top and take the other hose one end of it put it here on the out port on the other side and then put the quick disconnect on that end pretty easy little thread sealer on here and screw right in Hoses are on, 
now just on to the put the quick connects on and then we'll be able to hook it up to the cylinders themselves hydraulic lines hydraulic lines are hooked up now it's time to go ahead and fill this thing up with hydraulic fluid calls for seven quarts so picked up a two gallon jug here get this thing filled up oh no sight glass that's a handy way to make a mess didn't take long did it get these arms installed and, and uh, get it all lined up with the hole here. Take the big pin from the box, drop it in, little tap. There we go. There's also these little safety catch pins quick release that go in here into the bottom there's a hole right in that pin and that one's installed on to the other side next step it says raise the lift high enough so the arm gear stops attempt to automatically engage the restraint gears on the arms so let's see Hydraulic fluid flowing. There it goes. Move smoothly. They do. Nice. says ensure the arms do not move when a force of at least 100 pounds is applied laterally to the fully extended arm if they move readjust the arm restraint gear bolt or tighten them and i do need to tighten them because it does move next we have the safety release lever here this one can be a little tricky to put in we uh Want to put it in here, hole at the bottom, a little slant at the top. You're going to put that on the floor. So you need the spring going on the pin because you're going to want the spring to, to spring tension away from the, the post. So this will go in here like, like so. Oh, of course, yet another issue with the stamping. This won't go through because of that nub. Okay, take two on the safety lever. Pin, pin through the hole. Through the lever that spring goes on that side to hold that up against there same thing on this side and an e-clip 
to make sure it all stays on. You want to hand me that hammer? Thank you. Perfect. Next up is bleeding the cylinder. So we're gonna go ahead and crack these things loose. These top caps, I'm not gonna take them out, just loosen them up, get the air out. And then we're gonna run the lift all the way up to its max height, it says. One, two, three. Well, it says immediately get to the cylinders and tighten the screws back up. And now I know why. There's hydraulic fluid all over this thing. Now we're going to go ahead and lower the lift all the way back down and keep repeating this process up and down until all the air is gone. Well, posts are installed and everything's everything's good. Arms are on. Um, I'm worried I might have put the post too far apart. This is just an old Toyota, so it's pretty skinny. But I set it up for our Suburban too, so I don't know. Anyway, here it is, the Maiden Lift. Let's hope it works. <laughs> his on the locks that is good oh I'm super happy nice height for working on tires and suspension brakes yes I'm really excited so let's go over this again. This is the Max Jacks from Ben Pack. It's the M6K. Uh, pretty reasonable, under four grand, meant for a you know regular household garage. Everything has been really good on it. Quality control on a few of the small parts, which I'm sure is just ordered in from China. The Phillips head screws that had the material still in the top. The bushings for the wheels that didn't have the flashing removed out of them. Uh, the where the safety lock is stamped out. There was a piece of metal still left in there I had to file out. So nothing major. And all in all, 
I am really happy with this. It is so nice to be able to get my truck up in the air in the garage and not roll around on the floor, or crawl around on my knees, jacks and jack stands and all that. Look at this. I mean, I can do 90% of everything with this. This is awesome. I'm so excited. Yes. All right. Well, if you've been thinking about one of these, get it. Just do it. Really simple install. Uh, I wish it only took as long as it does in this video. Simple install, basic tools. Concrete has to be at least four inches thick. Mine was five inches thick. You got to go down five inches for the. <laughs> Jasper! <laughs> for the anchors to sit correctly. But uh, all in all, really straightforward, simple install. Good for axle swaps, suspension, brakes, tires, everything underneath the truck. Nice. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you out on the trail.